Hi, I'm Baron. I'm the Goat Health Veterinary Officer for Agriculture Victoria and I also have a small, small bull goat herd in northwest Victoria. This webinar is predominantly for peri-urban small landholders and those that are new to goats. For those of you who have had goats for ages, it may be old hat, but it might remind you of why you do the things that you do. The first session will cover your role in traceability and what is required in regards to PICs, NVDs, analyzed tags, movement records, health declarations and veterinary chemical registers. There are almost 4,000 Victorian producers that have indicated they have goats. But this number could is double that as not many producers have actually indicated or updated what stock they have and there, there are many properties out there who are yet to obtain a pick. The property identification code, known as a PIC, defines a property where livestock are kept and properties including residential land, keeping livestock must obtain and maintain a valid PIC, including notifying any changes in owner and or manager contact details and within two working days. The PICs are used in tracing and controlling disease and residue issues, but are also used in times of fires or floods. And sorry, I've got someone saying that sound is cutting in and out. The PICs are also used in tracing and controlling disease and residue issues, but are also used in times of fires or floods to identify owners of livestock who may need assistance and to help in returning straying livestock to their rightful owners if the animals are analyzed identified. If you're on small acreage, please check your council local laws prior to purchasing livestock, as in some councils you are not allowed to have livestock on less than half a hectare or within certain zones. To get or amend a pick, you have three options. You can apply and update your pick online, you can download an application form from Agriculture Victoria's website, or contact the PIC helpline on 1800 678 779 to have a form mailed or faxed to you. With any movement of goats, a national vendor declaration is a legal mar market driven requirement. NVDs are obtained via the Livestock Production Assurance Program and cover aspects about whether the animal was vendor bred or not and the potential for chemical residues. You can get a hard copy book or use an electronic version. The owner or the person responsible for the dispatch is the person who generates it and it needs to be provided to the receiver by the time of arrival. Since 1st of January 2017, goat kids born in Victoria have required an electronic tag prior to leaving their property of birth. When ordering out NLIS electronic tags, you nominate which species the tags will be applied to, as in sheep or goats. The tags are registered on the NLIS database against that species and must not be used in other species. If you have both sheep and goats, I recommend choosing either a different colour or a different tag style so you don't get them mixed up. From the 1st of January 2019, electronic NLIS tagging is required for interstate sheep and goats born after this date, when they leave a Victorian property. And from the 1st of January 2022, all sheep and goats in Victoria when they leave a Victorian property must be electronically tagged. But if you only have a small number of goats, I would recommend electronically tagging any that don't have, already have electronic tags, as if they stray, when they are scanned, they will come up as being from your pick and return to you sooner. Since the 31st of March 2018, property property movements of electronically analysed tag sheep or goats, other than to a property of the same pick, a sale yard or an abattoir, have, have to be registered on the analysed database. The person receiving the animals is the one responsible for registering the movement on the analysed database within 48 hours. The property to property transfer can be done by a third party, example, but your stock agent or the transporter or the actual vendor of the livestock. 
However, legislative requirement still sits with the producer who owns or introduces the stock to ensure that this is done. To complete an analysed transfer, the electronic ta tags do not have to be scanned and entered into the database. The details can be visually read off the tag. There is the option to email or post the movement information to Analyze Limited, who can complete the transfer for you, but there is a fee for processing of paper-based movement records. You can have a single sign-on via MyMLA or individually sign up to www.analyze.com.au to obtain a producer account. Other paperwork you may receive when buying goats is a National Goat Health Declaration. This is voluntary but covers aspect of disease risks and animal health husbandry treatments. They are obtained from Animal Health Australia via the Farm Biosecurity website in the toolkit set section. When using veterinary chemicals, you must make the following records. The product trade name, species of animal, location of the animal, identification number or description of the animal, dates the animal was treated with the product and quantity of the product used for each treatment. You also need to record the product's expiry date, batch number, withholding period or export and or export slaughter interval if there is one, and the date it's safe to slaughter or, or consume any milk products. If you use a veterinary chemical not registered for goats, or a veterinary chemical at a different dose rate to that on the label, you need an off-label advice note from your private vet. The best thing is to develop a relationship with your private vet so that they know you, your setup and your goats, as in invariably animal health emergencies happen after hours. If you are regularly using off-label products in your goats, developing an on-farm animal health program in consultation with your private vet is an idea, ideal. The other main legal responsibility is to ensure your goats cannot access any feed with restricted animal material in it. And goats are pretty clever at undoing latches and getting into things in areas that they shouldn't. As whilst your goat may get bloat or diarrhoea from getting into the chook pen and eating the grain and pellets, or eating the dog's kibble, it is legal to allow them access. This ban was introduced to protect public and animal health in Australia and to protect our trading options. Another recent change was that any advertisements selling or giving away livestock either in print or online is now required to have the pick of where the animals are located. This is similar to how dog and cat advertisements require the microchip or when selling a car you need to provide the VIN number. So there are a lot of acronyms to understand. But the main thing to remember is that a pick is like a driver's license, analyzed tags are like the number plate on your car, the MVD is the car registration papers, and a national goat health declaration is the mechanics report. If you require any further assistance, these are some useful contact details. I'll now hand back to Kimberly. There at all, so I can't hand, hand back to you. There's still people that say the vaccine remote and still get the sound drop out. What do I do with my headset? Okay, bye. Okay, I've realised that Kimberly, I'm not handing to Kimberly. We'll next move, now move on to the next section. If you've got does any, first of all though, before I move on to the next section, if, does anyone have any questions that they want to type up or anything? I'll just have a look through. It doesn't seem to be any. Some people still got no sound. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to, how to fix that issue. Um, if you logged in with your, registered with your email address, hopefully by the, at the end of it, once it's been compiled, it can all be emailed to you or a link to where it will be will be sent out to all participants. 
Oh, someone's just worked out how to. Hopefully, someone's worked it out. Okay, now on to the next section, which is the do's and don'ts of goat care. We shall cover how to choose your goat, transportation, quarantine, housing, feed, water, fencing, and stocking rates. Why do you actually want to have goats? Is it for the meat? Is it for the dairy to make cheese, yogurt, or milk? Fibre to um, harvest the cashmere or mohair? Or are they miniatures? Is it a hobby stud, stud and showing or commercial? You want to look at what your markets are. Where are they around you? Are you looking at the domestic market, a niche farmer market, or export? Are you just looking to are you looking to breed and on sale livestock, or is it just for weed management and enjoyment on your property? Are you looking at does, weathers, or bucks? Goats are a herd animal, not a solo animal. So you really need to have ensure that you've got the area to have two or more, and they can be quite addictive. You want to see what your long-term goals are. Breed associations have set standards for does and bucks with respect to height, conformation, and other traits. And you can also use their guidelines when looking at purchasing new goats. But basically, when choosing a new buck, the aspects I consider are the seven T's. Teeth, as in age, looking for over or undershot jaws. Torso, as in body condition. Are we overly fat or are we in good paddock condition? Toes, how often will they require trimming? Can you considering your land terrain. Tossle, has he ever had a history of urine calculi? Any deviations or lesions? Testicles, make sure there are two. Of a relatively even size and no unusual lumps and bumps. Teats, male teat structure will have an effect on what his progeny have and in the long run, you want does that can rear kids with no hassles. And temperament, you want an animal that you can handle and work safely around. Other aspects you would look at in a buck, depending on the breed, are milk production aspects of its dam, fibre diameter, growth rates, and horn set if not polled or disbudded. When breeding, with each kidding, you want to improve your livestock and get further towards your long-term goals. When you've decided on your goat or goats, you also need to consider how you're going to transport them. Are you going to do it yourself or are you going to get a contract to do it? If it is a long way and is buying from interstate, have you checked whether you need interstate crossing papers? There are rules as to the stocking density of goats within a transport trailer and the time of feed and water, both prime during transportation. depending on the age of the goats, their size and their pregnancy status. You also need to consider the elements as in wind, rain and sun and preferably have the front of the trailer enclosed to provide a wind buffer. It is recommended to quarantine your goats for 30 days prior to introducing them to your herd. This is so that you can test for diseases like JD and CAE. JD and CA are both notifiable diseases in Victoria. Both diseases have long-term production and welfare issues. Being a notifiable disease means that you, your vet and the laboratory need to notify Agriculture Victoria when you suspect or have the disease. And it is advisable as selling goats to other producers that you inform them fully in writing using a goat health declaration. Yoni's disease is caused by a bacteria that is spread by faeces. Basically, it causes thick thickening of the intestinal lining so that the animal can't absorb its own food. And so it starts to utilise its fat and muscle reserves. It is also known as a chronic wasting disease. Goats can get both the sheep and cattle strains of Yoni's disease and there is no known cure. There is a vaccine that over time, with other management practices, will reduce the bacterial load on your property. But in the long run, it is better not to have the disease in your livestock. CAE known as caprine arthritis encephalitis, and also known as big knee, is a virus that is spread mainly by colostrum, milk, and saliva. 
it can cause arthritis, mastitis, pneumonia, and encephalomyelitis in kids. There is no known cure. But with hygienic management and testing and culling of positive goats, the disease can be controlled, managed, and eradicated from your property. The 30 days gives you time to test and treat for worms and then retest after worming to make sure that the drench worked if required. Enables to check for external parasites and give two treatments for lice if needed. To trim toes and check for foot rot. To check cut the coat for weed seeds and allow the seeds to pass through the intestinal tract. And it allows the animal to adjust to you, your feed and your climate as any change in feed can take up to 10 days for the microbes in the room and to adjust over. Housing depends on your number, your location, climate and the type of goats. If intensively run, there are rules on the minimum space allowed for lounging, exercise and feed and water trough dimensions and access. But if you're a small, small producer, consider whether you want a permanent or movable structure how easy will it be to remove spoilt and contaminated bedding material? Can it be disinfected if you get an issue with coccidiosis or an intestinal bacterial infection? Does it need to be fox or dog proof? And will you need to segregate your goats within it during kidding times or in clement weather? Tethering can be done, but it is regarded as a temporary method of restraint and is not suitable for long-term confinement and goats need to be released from their tether daily for exercise. Goats under six months of age should not be tethered and there are rules on the type and length of tethers, the need to train an animal to be tethered, how often you need to inspect them and the provision of food, water and shelter. There are risks of not being able to escape from dogs, tipping over water containers and dehydrating in hot weather and getting entangled within the tether. It can be done but there needs to be at least twice daily inspections and a high level of care. Goats eat on average 3.5% of their body weight a day in dry matter, but it really depends on whether they are growing, pregnant or lactating as to the quality and the protein and the energy content of the provided feed that is required. You need to understand what plants in your paddock can be toxic to goats and consider what mix of pastures and forage you can grow as goats are more of a browser than a grazer. Be careful of garden prunings as that is where the majority of poisonings tend to occur in Victoria, from well-meaning family members or neighbours throwing branches and cuttings over the fence, not realising that a lot of your common garden plants can be toxic to goats. If hard feeding, make sure that goats cannot get their horns or feet entrapped within the feeder, position it so they can't Spoil it by defecating or lying in it. When providing ad-lib hay, if in a high rainfall area, also ensure it can't become wet and get mouldy. There are a number of goat specific lick blocks or loose licks available. The blocks usually have molasses as a binder for the attractant and the loose licks have salt as an attractant and limiter. Whether you choose a block or a loose lick depends on what is available to you and whether you want an all-purpose one or are trying to treat a deficiency that is in your area, like iodine deficiency, which can cause goiter and kids. The main, the main thing to cons is to provide them ad lib, record the use by dates and replenish as required. Your goats may not touch them for a couple of months, but then you may have a pasture growth or drying off in the paddock and you will notice them access your mineral station more often. With water, goats in hot weather can drink more than 12 litres of water a day. It is preferable to provide water in a stock trough as then you have more control over its provision and cleanliness and you won't get goats getting stuck in the mud trying to access it. Water troughs need to be ab able to be easily cleaned out, be of a depth or being replenished often enough that the water is not too tepid. Be careful of using old bathtubs as whilst they are a good depth for a hobby farm, there is the potential for lead to leach out into the water and contaminate your goats. 
Kids that are a couple of days old will mimic and copy their mother and drink water. But you need to provide it in a container that kids can easily reach and easily get out of if they inadvertently topple in. And if you're on bore or river water, it may be worth getting your water tested for its salt, mineral and metal content levels, especially if you have weathers as pets or as selling meat, milk and cheese products. With fencing, they say if water can get through a fence, so will a goat. Some goats climb or jump over, some go under, or some go through. And the grass always seems greener on the other side. A lot of the time you have to work with your neighbours regarding the type of fencing you have. In Victoria, the Fences Act covers who pays for a dividing fence. The type of fence that can be built, how to give notices and how to resolve disputes. Your livestock need to be kept on your property and not allowed to stray to eat the neighbour's crops or cause an accident on the road. But you also don't want your neighbour's livestock straying onto your place, eating your feed and potentially bringing diseases and weeds seeds onto your place. If, if you can train them to an electric outrigger on your fence, then that will decrease the chance of them getting their head stuck in the fence. Also the, consider the type of end stays you put in as you don't want to provide them with easy access to go to, over the fence. And remember, there are rules about electric fencing and the required signage where there may be public access. If using electric outriggers, it is recommended to provide either an internal length of chicken mesh fence or some other comfortable scratching rubber surface, surface so that they can get rid of their winter coats unless they are pets or show goats and you're giving them regular brushes or clipping them. Now there have just been a few highlighted questions come up. Um, are there apps to formulate a balanced ration? There are some, Meat Livestock Australia I believe has got a good feed um, app to look at cost of ration and everything else like that. Salinity level, to chop it off, oh, salinity level. There, that is one of the biggest things you need to get your um, water tested for its salinity level if you are on a river or bore because they won't drink if the water's too salty. You'd have to look at what sort of salts they were, whether is it just salt or is it the mineral salt that's causing the problem as well. I haven't got the figures straight in front of me, but they are available online. Moving on. Moving on, with stocking rates, your stocking rate depends on your land terrain, your annual rainfall, whether your passes are improved or unimproved, at what age you are turning your kids off and how much labour, chemical treatments and supplementary feeding you are prepared to provide. Research by Dr Bruce McGregor has shown that 8 DSC, a DSC is a dry sheep equivalent, per hectare is ideal for minimising internal parasitism. So an adult doe who rears a kids to 12 months of age is seen as 3 DSC. So a 30 acre property could potentially sustain 30 odd does, taking into consideration laneways, watering points and shelters. The biggest consideration is that pasture is potentially the cheapest feed you'll ever grow, so you don't want that eaten out so that you get erosion and lose all your topsoil. And for worm control, it is preferable if pasture is taller than 7 to 10 centimetres. If you have only recently purchased your property, it is probably best if you start out with a small herd so that you can see what your seasons are like, when your best growing times are and where the goats are for you. There are a lot of resources out there. MLA has a going into goat guide with different modules on aspects of goat farming and has quite a few good goat videos. Most textbooks are either in ink English or they're American. There are a few Australian ones, but with any text I would recommend borrowing it through your library first to see if it suits you and your goats. Find out who in your area has goats, if there is a local goat club, and attend goat shows to meet other knowledgeable goat breeders.
The next section is looking after your goat's teeth, feet and horns. These are just some aspects to consider that may not be on your radar. You can age a goat by the eruption of adult teeth until it is about three to four years old. After that you'll be guessing its age by its horn length or tooth looseness, tooth loss and wear and tear on its lower front teeth. Feed needs to be of a fibre length to encourage rumination and cud formation. If your hay has a lot of spiky seeds in it, you need to look out for seeds getting caught in amongst the teeth and causing issues, especially when there is tooth wear and loss at an older age. With older goats that are starting to lose their teeth, you may need to provide softer, smaller length, more nutritious hard feed and watch your goats chewing, that it is a normal action, that they are not quitting as in dropping food and that there are no loose or floating back molars as they can lead to pockets where food can get stuck, ferment and bacteria populate. With feet, the main issues can be foot rot, scald, overgrown hooves and an uneven growth and wear due to poor foot conformation. Depending on your land terrain and whether your goats have rocks to climb on or abrasive surfaces to walk on, you may find that you are regularly trimming your goat hooves. There are a number of videos available online on how to trim goat hooves, but the best way to learn is actually go and help and see another experienced breeder trim their goat's hooves. You need to learn how to restrain the goat comfortably so that it is not stressed or fighting you. Find a pair of foot shears and secateurs which are easy for you to use and keep them sharp, clean and disinfect them between properties or mobs. A hoof pick is a great Christmas present and is fantastic for getting in and cleaning the hooves and removing hard dirt or stones prior to pairing, rather than using the clips, tips of your cutters which can inadvertently puncture the sole if the goat jumps suddenly. The goal of trimming the hoof should be to get the bottom of the foot to match the angle of the coronary band which is where the hair ends at the top of the foot. If you only have a few goats, you can do them standing. They don't really like being placed on their rump as you do with sheep, but if you have a lot to do, either making a raised stand to restrain them or buying a tilting cradle will be nicer on your back in the long run. With horns, depending on the breed, there are different styles whether they are curve around, grow outwards or straight up and then curve out and around. With some breed associations it is a requirement to disbud when showing. This is done when the goat is very young using heat to kill the horn cells. Most breeders are now providing pain relief sourced from their private vet when doing this. A lot of the miniature breeds are disbudding as they are in close proximity to children and most dairy breeds are disbudded due to the style of horn and potential damage to udders. There are also quite a few breeds where pole goats, those that are naturally without horns, have been bred. There is a lot of debate about having horns and disbudding, but whatever you decide to do, if disbudding, it needs to be done at a young age, as once it is more than a horn bud, removal of the horns is a veterinary procedure. You can trim the tips of horns to smooth the ends off so they are less damaging, but it is illegal to use illustrator bands to remove a goat's horns. If not buying polled or disbudded goats, consider the type of horn set, your infrastructure, as in the width of your race or holding facilities with adult animals, and be aware that if horns are set too close together, legs can get caught in them. Goats are very hardy animals and can and will recover from setbacks with good nutrition and care. A good resource on your responsibilities is the Australian Industry Welfare Standards and Guidelines for Goats, which was developed by Animal Health Australia with the Goat Industry Council of Australia, after national consultation with various goat industry sectors. It is available online, but if you would like a hard copy, email publications at animalhealthaustralia.com.au. Now that is the end of that little section. I want to see if there was any questions raised. Um, I 
Okay, someone has asked about the information on lice and drenched treatments for dairy goats. The next section will cover off on some, some have to do with um, drenches and that to do with goats. I'll cover that in the next section. Okay. And yes, MLA has a focus on meat goats as yeah. So next section we'll go into the next section. It is this section will cover the basics on vaccinations, lice and worms. Some producers who have low numbers of goats have really good nutrition and a low environmental bacterial load or who are organic may decide not to vaccinate. If you do vaccinate, the main diseases you are vaccinating against are tetanus, enterotoxemia and cheesy gland. Goats are, un are unusual in that they require six monthly vaccinations compared to sheep and cattle who are only vaccinated annually. It is recommended to try and vaccinate your pregnant does at least six weeks prior to kidding as this boots, boosts her immune system and gives the cells in the mammary gland time to change to produce the best possible colostrum for her kids. What this means is that the kids develop immunity via the colostrum until they get their first vaccination at marking. Then the most important vaccination for, for the kids is the second booster as this is where their immunity system goes, I've seen you before, I know how to fight you and develops the longer term immunity. Once the vaccine pouch has been breached, most manufacturers have stated on the box that if it is drawn up aseptically, to discard it after 30 days. It may seem like a waste of product if you only have a few goats, but in the long run, it is very cheap insurance compared to losing an animal. With people who have small, number, have small numbers of goats, I usually recommend approaching your vet to see if they can dispense it or get them to put you in touch with other local goat owners and to share the cost and labour with vaccination and pedicure days. Some vaccines have a requirement where the vaccines are to be placed subcutaneously, as in Gadare, which is a vaccine against Yoni's disease. With Gadare, you also need to apply a tag with a V in a circle at the time of vaccination to identify those animals that have been vaccinated. With your clostridial vaccinations, as long as you choose a consistent spot that is not going to restrict movement or eating, so that if you do get an abscess, you know that it is a sterile vaccine abscess, or that you have accidentally nicked the muscle or dirt was introduced with the, with the needle, rather than a weed seed or some other skin puncture causing an abscess. Whilst there are no withholding periods with most vaccines, you do need to record its use in your veterinary chemical register. I would also mark on your calendar, you do need to record its use in your veterinary chemical register. I would also mark on your calendar when they are due for their six monthly booster so that it is not overlooked and you can make sure you can get the product and the volume you want prior to the day. With lice, there are two main types of lice seen in Victoria in goats in Victoria. A rounded headed chewing louse that causes the goat to itch and rub against trees, fences and other structures and a pointy headed blood sucking louse which can cause anemia and ill thrift. You can tell the difference between them by their head shape, how active they are when exposed to sunlight or if you squish one between your fingernails and you get blood. The photo on the slide shows two blood sucking lice at the front with a biting, chewing louse catching up the rear. Not many products are registered for use in goats and those that are can have health risks for the person applying the product. You can get an off-label permit from your private vet for other products but you need to observe the meat, fibre and milk withholding periods. You also need to consider what is called the wool rehandling period. As most louse products have been developed for sheep, 
This is the period between treatment and when an animal can be safely handled without the need for protective clothing. The other aspect to consider in the choice of product is whether it will have an effect on internal parasites. As with goat lice, you need to retreat within 10 to 14 days of the first application to kill the nymphs that have hatched from the eggs laid, and you don't want to encourage the development of drench resistance while treating for lice. And you have, need to have really good eyesight to see the lice sometimes when it's at small numbers, because with the photo on the screen, that little tiny animal in the red, in the red circle is the louse, and underneath that is that, an actual thumb. And you can see how small the louse is on the thumb. Worms, worms, worms. There is a fantastic website that has a lot of really useful information on worms and goes step by step through the different aspects of managing, controlling and treating for worms in your goats. This website is wormboss.com.au. There are worm drenches which are registered for use in goats and drenches sold over the counter for sheep in Victoria can be used but only at the stated label dose rates. One of the big issues is that most have a do not use in animals producing milk for human consumption label on them. A veterinarian's prescription is needed for using sheep worm drenches at higher doses in goats and to obtain the relevant meat and milk withholding periods. Your private vet can email Paraboss, the producers of the Worm Boss, Lice Boss and Fly Boss suite of tools to get a booklet on worm control in goats, advice for Australian veterinarians that explains the difference between what can or cannot be prescribed for goats and appropriate dose rates and withholding periods. Most states and territories allow vets to repackage small amounts of worm drenches into smaller sized containers suitable for backyard goats or small herds of goats. As long as re repackage and dispense drenches are labelled correctly with a client name, dose rate and withholding periods. Product labels can also be downloaded from AVPMA's PubQuest database which is a website which lists all the veterinary chemicals that are registered or that have permits in Australia. First off, you need to know whether your goats do or do not have worms. As a goat scouring may or may not be worms. It could be a change in feed, it could be a protozoan infestation like coccidiosis, or it could be a bacterial infection like salmonellosis. Some producers do do their own fecal floats at home, or take fresh faeces to, to their private vet for them to do an in-house faecal float. This is a great monitoring tool and will tell you whether you have low, medium or high number of eggs, but it won't differentiate between the important species as their eggs look similar under the mi microscope. The important aspect of a faecal egg count is the larval differential, which tells you the makeup of the worm population in the goats that you tested. Once you have determined what the species of worms are in the goats that you have tested, then you can start looking at what is the best product to use for your situation and what else you can do on your property to minimise larval contamination of your paddocks and improve the nutrition of your goats. Now someone's still, I've just seen that someone's asked, just asked the question, do you need individual certificates for every off-label use of chemical? What I would do in that instance is develop an on-farm animal health plan program with your private vet. Go and talk to your vet, look at the potential products that you might be going to use in a 6 to 12 month period and both you and he or she sign the document to say this is what you've arranged. So they've got a record of it and you've got a record that you keep with your veterinary chemical register. But understand that if anything changes, that it's, it's best to consult with them. With worms, it is important to un understand the life cycles of the worms you're dealing with. What daily temperatures and moisture levels are needed for eggs to hatch and how long larvae will survive on your pastures with your ambient temperatures. Each property is different with the worm population that is in the goats and resistance to the various drench products available is different as the worms have had exposure to different types and dosages of drenches. Doing the faecal egg count 
10 to 14 days post drench on, goat, on the goats that you tested pre-drench will help you determine the effectiveness of the drench that you used by seeing how, hopefully, the faecal egg count has lowered. The efficacy of some drenches can be improved by withholding feed, as in bringing the goats in the night before uh, into a holding yard so they empty out, ensuring that you provide water. But you've got to balance this off against the danger of inducing pregnancy toxemia or ketosis if the goats are heavily pregnant. Barber's pole worm is one of the nastier worms that's out there and it causes anemia and bottle jaw. Now, Fematra is a way of assessing the level of anemia in goats with animals with a score of one having a pink red eye mucous membrane colour and not requiring treatment for hemonchosis, whereas goats with a score of five have white mucous membranes on the eye and require immediate treatment and probably intensive and palliative medical treatment. With properties whose worm population is developing drench resistance, there is a new product that has been recently released called Biowormer. It is a natural fungus that when fed daily to the goats, passes through the intestine and germinates in the manure. Then it traps, paralyzes and consumes the emerging worm larvae. Whilst it does seem expensive in a larger herd, with a small herd that is being fed daily, it seems like it will be a great tool in breaking the worm parasite's life cycle. You're losing goats. What should you do? Talk to your neighbour. Your neighbour might have goats and have a similar issue. Someone in your district might have a similar issue. Definitely ring you the vet. Ring the, ring the department, which is the Department of Economic Development, Jobs, Transport and Resources, also known as Agriculture Victoria, but definitely don't ignore it. You need to ensure that when you do need to euthanize a goat, it is done promptly, safely and humanely. From the standards and guidelines, it states that a person in charge of a goat suffering from severe distress, disease or injury that cannot be reasonably treated must ensure the goat is promptly killed. A person must only use the bleeding out by neck cut to kill a conscious goat when there is no firearm, captive bolt or lethal injection available. So even though it's not as a nice thing to think about, it is something that you need to consider when you have livestock. If the unfortunate happened, how would you euthanize the animal and how then would you dispose of the carcass? If your livestock are suffering unusual signs or significant deaths, animal health staff can investigate or we can approve your private vet to undertake what's called a significant disease investigation with subsidised laboratory testing to, to determine what is happening on your property. It is better to find out why your goats are ill or dying and whether it is something that can be easily be treated and prevented. Are there, do we have any other questions coming up? Okay. Let me look back through because I think someone's edited one of the questions before. If vaccinated with Gadea for Yoni's disease, can the goats be moved to properties that are not vaccinated? Yes, they can. It's not a live vaccine. It is a killed vaccine. And it's an oil based, so that's why you get the lump of where up behind the ear where the vac vaccination is given, which gives helps generate the long term immunity. It doesn't totally prevent an animal from getting Yoni's disease, but what it does is reduce the amount of bacterial shedding that happen. And the reason why when you, you use the Gadea vaccine that you put a need to put a tag with a V in a circle in it in the animal is that so that when you then on sell the animal. If someone wants to test it for Yoni's disease, they will realise that a blood test will come up positive and they need to do a faecal culture to show that that animal is negative. Um, 
Someone has asked, that, is there still an exemption for tagging dairy breeds? There is a currently an exemption in Victoria for using both the visual and electronic analyzed tags in the nine dairy breeds, nine registered dairy breeds, and for miniature goats that got an elf style ear. That is being looked, they are currently tri trialling in some of the states in Australia, the an NLIS RFID leg band to try and see if that will overcome the issue of the dairy goat's ears being um, in the being in classic uh, intensive environment twice a day for being milked and the potential for the tear outs, but also overcome the issue of the new breed of um, goat La Mancha who have go for ears, who have no ears at all. And I actually saw some beautiful ones on Sunday at, at the Ballarat show. Um, okay, I'm just looking through other questions. Okay, there currently there's no indication of when the link band trials will uh, conclude, but I'm sure once it gets there, it will be advertised widely to everybody. Okay. All right, I've been told I now need to go to the last slide, which is of some goats enjoying some carrots, organic carrots at that. I've got to say thank you for those that have joined us tonight. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties at the start of it. Uh, but please refer to Kimberly's comments in the chat box. Thank you again and good night.
this all right? Um, someone has to sit on the rest of them. Am I wrong here? I'm on my self computer. Hello and welcome to the webinar. Sorry about the technical difficulty but when you're dealing with people from all over the state and in different offices and locations, it's hard to get technology working. Hopefully you can hear me now. If someone wants to do a little wave in that icon box to let me know, that would be great. Yep. Okay, I've got smiley faces, that's good. Hi, I'm Beren. I'm the Goat Health Veterinary Officer for Agriculture Victoria and I also have a small, small bull goat herd in northwest Victoria. This webinar is predominantly for peri-urban small landholders and those that are new to goats. For those of you who have had goats for ages, it may be old hat, but it might remind you of why you do the things that you do. The first session will cover your role in traceability and what is required in regards to PICs, NVDs, analyse tags, movement records, health declarations and veterinary chemical registers. There are almost 4,000 Victorian producers that have indicated they have goats. But this number could is double that as not many producers have actually indicated or updated what stock they have and they're there are many properties out there who are yet to obtain a pick. The property identification code, known as a pick, defines a property where livestock are kept and properties including residential land, keeping livestock must obtain and maintain a valid pick, including notifying any changes in owner and or manager contact details and within two working days. The PICs are used in tracing and controlling disease and residue issues, but are also used in times of fires or floods. And sorry, I've got someone saying that sound is cutting in and out. The PICs are also used in tracing and controlling disease and residue issues, but are also used in times of fires or floods to identify owners of livestock who may need assistance and to help in returning straying livestock to their rightful owners if the animals are analyzed identified. If you're on small acreage, please check your council local laws prior to purchasing livestock, as in some councils you're not allowed to have livestock on less than half a hectare or within certain zones. To get or amend a pick, you have three options. 
You can apply and update your pick online. You can download an application form from Agriculture Victoria's website or contact the PIC helpline on 1800 678 779 to have a form mailed or faxed to you. With any movement of goats, a national vendor declaration is a legal mar market driven requirement. NVDs are obtained via the Livestock Production Assurance Program and cover aspects about whether the animal was vendor bred or not and the potential for chemical residues. You can get a hard copy book or use an electronic version. The owner or the person responsible for the dispatch is the person who generates it and it needs to be provided to the receiver by the time of arrival. Since 1st of January 2017, goat kids born in Victoria have required an electronic tag prior to leaving their property of birth. When ordering out NLAS electronic tags, you nominate which species the tags will be applied to, as in sheep or goats. The tags are registered on the NLAS database against that species and must not be used in other species. If you have both sheep and goats, I recommend choosing either a different colour or a different tag style so you don't get them mixed up. From the 1st of January 2019, electronic analyzed tagging is required for interstate sheep and goats born after this date when they leave a Victorian property. And from the 1st of January 2022, all sheep and goats in Victoria when they leave a Victorian property must be electronically tagged. But if you only have a small number of goats, I would recommend electronically tagging any that don't have, already have electronic tags, as if they stray, when they are scanned, they will come up as being from your pick and